This video is for educational purposes only. Trinitrotoluene or TNT is a highly energetic compound and often used as an explosive, but it is very difficult to explode as it can only be exploded with a detonator. It is a very safe explosive as it is shock insensitive even when lighted burns without any explosion. But still it has to be handled with utmost respect and do not try making it. The purpose of this video is to teach organic synthesis and does not encourage making explosives. All the knowledge that I am sharing here is already available on YouTube and Wikipedia. Now to start things off I will take 4 ml of toluene in a 100 ml RB flask. I had around 20 ml of toluene but it had evaporated over a period of time and now I was left with only 4 ml of toluene. Now for it I prepared a nitrating mixture by taking 6 ml of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid in a beaker which has been kept in ice bath and to it 5 ml of 99% fuming nitric acid was added. As this addition does not evolve much heat as usual nitration mixture which uses 68% nitric acid since there is very less water present in the nitric acid. After the addition the mixture is allowed to chill in the ice bath as we need a cold nitrating mixture for the first nitration. Meanwhile, I set the RB flask containing toluene in an ice bath on a magnetic stirrer and started adding the nitrating mixture drop wise not letting the temperature rise above 30 degrees celsius as at this moment toluene gets mononitrated to form ortho and para nitro isomers along with the trace amount of metanitrotoluene. For monitoring the temperature, I carefully placed a thermometer inside the reaction mixture so as the stir bar does not collide with the thermometer. In the beginning, temperature rose to 30 to 40 degrees Celsius after each addition but after almost half nitrating mixture has been added, the temperature didn't rise after the addition so I added the rest nitrating mixture quickly. Now to proceed with the second nitration, the reaction mixture has to be heated to 80 to 90 degrees celsius for half an hour. So I set a hot water bath on my magnetic stirrer and attached a reflux condenser on the round bottom flask. To keep the water bath hot, a spirit lamp was placed in the side of the stirrer and a thermometer was placed placed inside the water bath to monitor the temperature. The water bath was covered with aluminium foil to prevent heat loss by evaporation. To ensure even heating of the water bath, the water is being stirred with a magnetic stirrer which is below the round bottom flask. It was heated like this for around 1 hour. This reaction would lead to the mixture of isomers of dinitrotoluenes in which the 2,4 dinitrotoluene will be the major product. After the reaction mixture has cooled down, the reaction mixture had two layers, the upper organic layer and the lower acid layer. The melting point of 2,4 dinitrotoluene is 70 degrees Celsius, so it should solidify, but it was still liquid, so to check, if we have really made 2,4 dinitrotoluene, I added some drops of organic layer into some water. After shaking for a while, a white solid chunk was formed. So I decided to do the workup. I took a beaker filled with water and to it I added the reaction mixture and also that solid chunk in the test tube. I washed the RB flask with same water and added the washings in the beaker. Then I broke up the solid chunk with a glass rod and then stirred it with a magnetic stirrer. Soon the cloudy solution cleared up.
Then the precipitate was vacuum filtered and washed with distilled water. The precipitate was transferred in a beaker and washed with sodium bicarbonate solution. The solution was heated and stirred to wash away acids, cooled and filtered. Then the solid was recrystallized from hot methanol. I forgot to take a photo of the crystals formed and I regret it as they were very pretty and needle shaped. I filtered them off using vacuum filtration and these are the dried crystals. They literally appeared just like glass full. The melting point of these crystals was 56 degrees Celsius. Had it been pure 2,4 DNT, its melting point should have been 70 degrees Celsius. Since there is a huge difference in the melting point I recorded and the reported melting point, it means that the product is very impure and therefore I didn't bother to weigh the impure product and did further calculations according to 4 ml toluene from which I started. Now for the third nitration I took 4.8 ml of 98% concentrated sulfuric acid and 4.8 ml of 99% fuming nitric acid. Both are in excess as the third nitration is not spontaneous as presence of two nitro groups deactivates the ring and to force the third nitro group it needs almost anhydrous conditions and an excess of acids. After preparing the nitrating mixture in the RB flask, I added the dinitro toluene directly into the nitrating mixture and heated it on an oil bath with stirring as done before on water bath. The temperature of the oil bath was kept in between 120 to 140 degrees Celsius. The oil is getting heated by spirit lamp. To maintain the temperature and the oil is being stirred with a stir bar to ensure even heating. You can see nitric acid condensing and refluxing. Therefore a reflux condenser is necessary. In this nitration a lot of brown fumes are produced. So I connected the top of the condenser with a nylon tube which leads into water. To prevent back suction a funnel is used. When one spirit lamp could not increase the temperature, second spirit lamp was also used for heating and then the temperature rose to 140 degrees Celsius. This way, the temperature was maintained between 140 to 120 degrees Celsius. In this reaction, the major and the minor dinitrotoluenes would give trinitrotoluene and also if some mononitrotoluene were present, they would also get converted into trinitrotoluene. It was heated for about 2 hours and first I stopped seeing nitric acid refluxing and then evolution of nitrogen dioxide stopped. Then it was heated for an half hour more and then allowed to cool. The organic layer was still liquid but as I tried to pour it into water it solidified so I added the acid into the water and a cloudy solution was formed. I tried to take out the solidified mass with water and glass rod. I was successful in taking out most of the product but some product remained stuck in the RB to which I added sodium bicarbonate solution. Later. The solution in the beaker cleared up after some time and it was then vacuum filtered and then first washed with digital water then the second washing has to be done with sodium bicarbonate solution. So I emptied the filtration flask and the sodium bicarbonate solution loosened the product so it easily came out of the round bottom flask. All the residue was washed with sodium bicarbonate to remove the adherent acids and then distilled water was used to wash off sodium bicarbonate solution. This is the crude TNT. To purify it, 
I recrystallized it from hot methanol. First, I took around 25 to 30 ml methanol and then heated it and added the crude TNT into it and stirred it to dissolve. It was heated to boiling and then the TNT melted but didn't dissolve completely. So I added some more methanol until a homogeneous solution is formed. Then discontinued the heating and allowed it to cool. Initially no crystals were formed. So I removed the watch glass to allow some crystals to form on the surface of the solution due to evaporation and induce further crystallization. Slowly, needle-shaped crystals started forming and completely filled the volume of the solution. I cooled the beaker in ice bath to precipitate as much as crystals I could. Then filtered these beautiful crystals via vacuum filtration. I never thought that a thing like TNT would appear so appealing and mesmerizing. The crystals appear like diamond needles. Under a white LED, they appear totally white, whereas under a fluorescent light, they appear slightly yellow. The yield was 3.5 grams, which corresponds to a percent yield of 35%. I checked the melting point of the TNT I made. It started melting around 79 degrees Celsius and completely melted at 80 degrees Celsius. The reported melting point of TNT is 81 degrees Celsius. Therefore, my product is almost pure as the melting point is very close to the reported melting point. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, please write down in the comment section and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. If you like my work, you can support me financially through Patreon and PayPal. Links are given in description.